Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grumman Pilots YouTube channel. Today, we're going to talk about Maynard's Last Yankee, and here it is at Nutri Airport, about 1977, rusty wheel standing beside it, when it had the original minus three degrees on the horizontal tail incident. Now, we're going to talk about angle of incidence and what it relates to in flight loads, and as you can see there, on the Traveler, it was also minus three, and then on the Cheetah and the Tiger, it was zero degrees, so stay tuned. So we would like to ask you, please subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the notify to stay current with our content. Now on the last Yankee, the last time it was an experimental, they were putting a Lycoming O360 A4M along with a scissors propeller on it, and they relocated the battery box to the back. That was the second experimental, but now let's talk about the first time it was an experimental, and that was getting an O320 and some other changes. Now they added an O320 E2A instead of the original O235 Lycoming, and they added a brace to the engine mount. They also changed the left and right elevator tips to be the AA1C slash Traveler elevator tips. So they were making a bigger tail on the airplane. And then you notice item number five, the change of the angle incident from minus three degrees to approximately one and a qu to one quarter of a degree. Now, that puts it pretty much in line with the cheetahs and tigers. And let's take a look at the aerodynamic load that that might be. And since they were changing the angle of incidence, they had to go ahead and put some shims for that little three degree. So there's a little bit of shims in the back on this particular airplane. Now here they talk about the shims and how the shims are shaped. They also talk about adding a nose strut, but they also talk about moving the horizontal stabilizer attach point upward exactly one inch is what they're going to call out and we're going to talk about that because there's a two-legged anchor that it screws into which has a um, half inch from center to the holding anchor so that when you drill one out and flip it around you move it up exactly one inch which is close to zero incidence on the tail now studying the flight loads on the tail i consulted two books I consulted the Manual for Naval Aviators, Aerodynamics for them, and then the other book that I used a lot was the Model Aircraft. Now, Model Aircraft need better stability because there's no human in there to fly it. So, Aerodynamics for Naval Aviators and the Model Book. And the reason why I consulted those is because I want to try to explain to you a flight load. And what you need to think about on the tail is you're going along, air has a weight. And when you change that deflection, you're changing it roughly one inch. So you're looking at a one inch section of air as wide as your tail being deflected. Now, let's talk about some of the deflection loads that you get on the aircraft because I want you to envision that ribbon of air. When you're doing 120 miles an hour, you're going 176 feet every second. And then you multiply that by the amount of air that you're displacing. And that kind of gives you a feeling for the load on the tail. So let's take a little bit of a look at that real quick. So let's take a look at the tail. And as you can see, there's the mounting holes for mounting it to the back attach points. And there's one of these on either side of the horizontal stabilizer. And there's the attach point with an AN3, an, I'm sorry, an AN4 bolt that goes through it into the blind capture. So that's what that part of it looks like on the tail. Now remember, there are gonna be shims in there because you're changing the angle and you don't wanna put any undue stress on the spar and all that's inside the airplane, uh, especially on the horizontal tail attach. So as we come back around, they're gonna to have to widen that slot downward because you're bringing the tail downward you can see the pattern it has on the tail from the original now let's take a closer look inside the uh, back section of that horizontal stabilizer now since the rudder and the left and right horizontal stabilizer are the same part you can mount them in any location they all have the same holding in the back and then they also have the attach point forward
Now that attach point is riveted on the inside of the rudder and the horizontal stabilizers on either side. It's kind of dark in there, so let's throw some light in there, and that's a ribbon um, light that's in there. So you can see how it's mounted in there and how it's braced with all the rivets and all along through there. So that's what the horizontal tail looks like and the attach on the inside. So it's got plenty of strength when you move it. But now let's get into a little bit of what the flight loads are going to be when the airplane's moving along. Let's just call it 120 miles an hour for sake of argument. And then here you can see all the attach points and the shims and all that go in there. So stay tuned for a bit more fun as we get ready to talk about the flight load. Now here's a tail section that's been damaged off of an AA1C, but there's the slot for the attach point to go into, and there's the back bulkhead that the other side of the part, you know, the left and right horizontal will all mount to. And then there's the two-legged anchor, and as I say, that's one inch from the rivet holding it on one side to the center point of the bolt going through there. So if you drill it out and you flip it around, you're going to move the tail up or down one inch depending upon which one you drill out and how you remount it. So we're going to be changing that angle of incidence and by doing that we're going to remove some flight load which is going to add some speed to the airplane. Now here's the spec sheet on the two-legged anchor and as you can see from the distance there for distance C from the center to the other one is a one-half inch for the number four two-legged anchor. And then here it is on the airplane with a ruler beside it and you can see again it verifies what the data sheet says that it's a half inch from the center of the bolt to the rivet holding it so drilling it out and flipping it around you'll move it exactly one inch and here we go that's exactly how they did it on the airplane they drilled out one rivet swung it around and then re-riveted it Now here's the weight of air. It's 0 0.0807 pounds per cubic foot. Now, to give you an idea, in a hangar 54 by 80 and 22 feet tall, there's about 7,000 pounds of air in that hangar. Now you're changing the angle of incidence because you want to reduce the aerodynamic load that's being exerted by it, but you're also going to be going faster, which is going to make your control services much more responsive and have more authority. As an example, a 30% increase in speed will get you a 70% rudder force increase. So when we move the tail, as an example here, if you do all the math, at 144 miles an hour, the tail force between both the horizontal left and the horizontal right are exerting 340 pounds of force on the tail. You remove that, you're going to have some increase in speed. And that's what Maynard was going for. As a matter of fact, this airplane cruises right at 195 miles an hour. Nine gallons an hour, and away it goes. So it's a really fast pocket rocket. So that's a little bit about tail incident. This is the only two-seater that has that STC. It's not a multiple, so don't call about modifying yours. Gene Plazak tried it in one of the tail draggers, and it made it a little bit unstable. So we hope you found all this information about the tail incident useful and informative. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great day flying your Grumman.